Joseph Henri Honoré Bergs was a French writer. Born in 1856, in 1897 he was named member of the French Legion of Honor. In 1903 he and his brother Seraphine became jury members of Académie Goncourt's first Prix Goncourt competition for writers. Until 1909 he co-wrote with his brother Seraphine Jocelyn Francois Beau under the pseudonym of J. H. Rosny. When the two split, Joseph Arnery became J. H. Rosny the Elder, while Seraphine continued publishing as J. H. Rosny the Younger. An influential early writer of French science fiction, Boex wrote stories of ancient civilizations encountering aliens or tales of the far future taking place upon a dying Earth. His work was so influential that since 1980 there is a Prix Rosny Aine literary prize named after him. He also wrote several Stone Age novels, one of which we shall be discussing today. His Quest for Fire being the basis for a 1981 movie of the same name directed by Jean-Jacques Anaud, who would later direct Seven Years in Tibet. In 1926, Burr became the president of the Académie Goncourt. He was subsequently nominated twice for the Nobel Prize in Literature and died in Paris in 1940. The Quest of the Dawn Man was originally published in 1918 under the title of The Giant Cat and was a sequel to his 1911 The Quest for Fire. The novel focuses on Awon of the Olhammer tribe, a sturdy and powerful fellow, and on his friend Zohar, son of the earth, last of the men without shoulders and the only one to escape the slaughter of his people by the Red Dwarfs. Among the members of his tribe, Awon is both admired for his strength but also detested for the mercy he shows to his vanquished foes, a quality passed on to him from his father Nao. Venturing into a great cavern to find a new dwelling place for his people, Aon and Zoha emerge into a wild country where they come across a ferocious tiger they intend to slay along with other beasts like jackals that they also must contend with. They eventually observe a great massive saber tooth and through circumstances become installed in a great massive cave ledge with the beast growing used to Zoha's continued presence as it continues to glower at him through a shaft in the cave wall. Along his further travels, Aon runs across a friendly tribe of Amazons besieged by a barbarous enemy named the Chelians who had already slaughtered all their men. The Chelians, after defeating their force, tirelessly pursue them and Aon and his company only manage to get away for a short time each time before being found by their scouts. After a long and treacherous journey, Aon returns to his old tribe, but they are very unhappy with his presence and continue to detest and bully not only him, but the bride he found himself in the land beyond the caverns. And so Aon decides to take his new sweetheart back there, making a home for himself which is to the great delight of Zoha, who manages to be reunited with the saber-tooth to which he had grown very fond during his time in the cave. It is rather an exciting adventure story of its kind, and I do wish to read the first book in the series sometime in the future.